Welcome to CLAC Training Alberta's Welding Training and Test Center. My name is Ted Gunn. I am the welding shop manager. With me today is Mr. Kelly Lauren. He is the assistant shop manager and a welder extraordinaire. Today we will be demonstrating a TIG root filling cap on a six inch GED 40 stainless pipe. Over the last few years, TIG welding also known as GTAW, gas tungsten arc welding. The demand for TIG welders over the fast, past few years has risen. TIG welding is a special trade, special art, and it takes lots of skill. And more and more companies are going to use an alloy such as stainless, zinc canal, and that, so the demand is up, and they are looking for certified people to do it. What we're gonna show you today is on a six inch skid 80 joint. Kelly is gonna put a root in, and then he is going to hot pass it and he's going to take it out to the cap. One of the things with welding alloys is oxygen becomes the enemy in it. So if you look at this piece of pipe here, it's all taped up. Front and back, we have a clear lens on here so you can see what's happening as he's welding. What we have to do is we have to purge the back side of this, get the oxygen out of there. That prevents the weld from sugaring as we call it in the industry and gives a nice clean bead in there. By the way, TIG welding is the cleanest form of welding known to mankind. TIG welding takes uh, uh, the greatest amount of skill. You have to have hand-eye coordination. Number one, you have to feed that filler rod. Kelly will demonstrate here. You're, so you're feeding the filler metal. You also got to steady the TIG torch in your other hand and you got to get the rhythm going between the two of them and keep that metal feeding in there. There's no machine doing that for you. It's going to be Kelly doing that on his own. And you have to get that filler rod to the inside of that root so you do get deposit on the inside. For a successful weld, penetration is minimum flush, maximum reinforcement of one eighth of an inch. The examiner will be looking to make sure that there is no sugaring. He'll be looking to make sure that it's bonded on both sides of the root. Uh, that there's no pinholes, fish eyes. Okay, fish eyes come from when you break the arc and you haven't trailed off properly. And as Kelly breaks the arc, he'll be walking up the side of the pipe to break it off so that you don't end up with a fish eye in there, which could be a defect. When Kelly tails out, he leaves the rod in the puddle. It assists him with the restart in the joint. And right now he'll be re-striking and continuing on with the weld. As Kelly travels up the pipe, he has to stop periodically to peel the tape up to open up more exposed root zone. You don't want to have that totally open because we already got rid of the oxygen out of the weld zone. There's a couple of things I'd like to point out at this time. If you watched any of our other videos, there is extreme noise involved. TIG is very quiet. All it is is the hiss of the gas. Now, one of the problems that guys seem to have is when they're welding, putting a root in a stainless pipe, is it 
sucks in on them, it gets real tight, they can't get the filler rod through. If you're putting that root in properly and getting enough deposit, the pipe cannot shrink to do that to you. So far, Kelly's got a real good one going in here. Kelly just was grinding on this pipe. When you're welding stainless, what you are doing is most times you are using bridge tacks. And bridge tacks are little uh, pieces of the filler metal. They're stainless and you tack them in to maintain your gap. As you come up to them, you have to cut them out. And when you cut them out, you try not to take anything off the side walls so that you can maintain your good continuous route. Kelly will now continue on. Okay, now that Kelly has the root in this pipe, he's gonna demonstrate doing the hot pass filling cap. Before that, Kelly will prep the, the weld area, a little bit of grinding, a little bit of buffing, and then he'll continue on. When you're testing in our shop doing this, whether it's a renewal or your initial, it's basically a lot similar to the initial B, a little different. Number one, after you've given your coupons, you will show the examiner the tacked up pipe on what we call a 45 block. Most recertifications are done on a 45. That gives the welder the all position. Once you have the root in, you have to show the examiner the root. If your root isn't successful, well, it's a fail. If it's successful, you will continue on and hot pass, fill and cap that pipe out the next time the examiner at our facility looks at the pipe after the root is when the cap is complete. Yeah. 
before Kelly puts the hot pass on, I want to point out a couple of things. Number one, we leave the purge gas on until the hot pass is on. He has turned the machine up roughly 40 amps. Okay, not every welder welds the same, but Kelly's gone from 80 amps when he put the root into 120 for the hot pass. The reason we turn the machine up for a hot pass, same as in when we do a 60-10 root, 70-18 and fill and cap, you're bridging that gap. So you're running cold so you can control the getting that root in there. Now what you want to do is make sure you get everything to bind together. The two side walls across the root. So that's why he turns it up. He's going to have a little bit larger puddle and he's got to carry a little more heat to keep that metal fluid. When welding stainless, one of the things you have to watch out for is heat input. You don't want to overheat the stainless, the alloy. You don't want to turn it black. So you got to take your time. And again, small hot beads is the key to success. There's about a four hour window to weld that pipe out, start to finish. Once Kelly completed the cap, he let the pipe cool a little bit and then he took a hand wire brush to it to clean the blackness out of the weld zone before you show somebody. You don't want to use a wire wheel at this stage. And here is the finished product. That includes our GTAW presentation. I uh, want to let you know that you can go to our website. We offer practice time so that you can come in and practice, get some guidance. Uh, to perfect your skill before you do the test. We did this demonstration on a six inch Sked 40. Most tests are done on a two inch boiler tube. For any further information, contact our website.